Les verbes avec l'auxiliaire être. So if you remember, in some cases, for what we call composed tenses, uh, you will have to use whether avoir or être. So in most of the cases, you will have to use avoir. But then in some cases, you will have to use this auxiliaire être. Okay. And uh, well, I've been doing some videos regarding this topic, but then I thought that maybe it might be useful to see because there are many, many different techniques to remember the list of verbs that will require this être uh, verb. Uh, and then here is one of them. And it's called Dr. A and Mrs. P. Van der Tramp. Okay, so it's a technique that apparently is uh, used uh, in, uh, well, English-speaking countries. Okay, so we'll see that uh, it can be quite useful. I'm not really sure if it's working for everyone, but still, it's uh, one technique. Okay, so the idea is that you will, well, try to remember actually these or these names, and then, uh, well, each letter will represent one verb that will require this auxiliaire être. Okay, so let's start now. And so if we take the whole thing here and then we take only the first letter here, it's D, and then D will be for the verb descendre. Okay? Descendre. Then after that, R will be for rentrer. Okay? Rentrer. Then M will be for mourir. Mourir. R will be for revenir, revenir. Then we'll have S and it will be, it will be for sortir, sortir. P, passer par. Okay, passer par. Then V. Venir, okay, venir, after that you will have A, and A is for aller, aller, N, naître, naître, then you will have D, and D will be for devenir, devenir, E, Entrer, entrer, then R for retourner, retourner, T for tomber, tomber, R for rester, rester, then A for arriver, Arriver, M will be for monter, monter, and last but not least, P will be for partir, partir. Okay, so you have it. Um, as I said, I'm not really sure uh, if it works for uh, everyone, but then it's one option, okay, or then the other option will be or would be the, 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 the classical list and then you learn them by heart. I mean, that's one option. So let's see them one more time. Okay, so the, the first one is descendre. After that, we'll have entrer. Then mourir. Revenir. Sortir. Passer par. Venir, aller, naître, devenir, entrer, retourner, tomber, rester, arriver, monter. Partir. Les homographes. So don't be afraid, don't be scared. It's actually not that difficult. When we're talking about this, about this uh, homograph thing, we're talking about words that will be written 
almost the same way normally they should be written the same way but in we'll see that we've got two cases that are a bit uh, special but then they are written almost the same way uh, but then uh, according to the gender so whether it's masculine or feminine the meaning of the word will change okay so we'll see the first one the first one is un moral okay un moral and so you can see the meaning here in English okay and so if we see the feminine form and I wanted to start with this one because as I said in most of the cases they will be written the same way but in that case you get this e uh at the end which is silent so you don't pronounce it so clearly it is the same pronunciation for the two words but then in that case it's feminine une morale okay and here is the meaning in English okay so un moral une Moral. Okay, so let's see the second now. Un moule. Okay, and you get here the meaning. Un moule. And the feminine form. Une moule. Alright. Une moule. Okay, keep in mind you pronounce them the same way, but then as you can see, the meaning is different. Le physique. Le physique and here is the meaning and then la physique la physique and you've got here the meaning okay le physique la physique un poste un poste and here normally so post or position we're talking about a job okay un poste une poste une poste and here is the meaning un tour un tour okay so actually this word has quite many meanings so it can be tour turn a turn and other meanings as well but then the good thing is that the feminine form une tour has only one translation and it's here it's our une tour okay so un tour une tour and then un livre un livre une livre une livre okay so we're talking about the pound so it can be uh, well the measurement for a uh, uh, the weights or then it can be as well uh, une livre sterling so if we're talking about the money okay un mémoire un mémoire and then une mémoire une mémoire un capital un Capital. So here we're talking about money. <laughs> Une capital. Une capital. So uh, you can see that we pronounce it the same way, but as we had previously, you get to put this uh, at the end. Okay. Un voile. Un voile. Une voile. Une voile. And here with the sail, we're talking about the, the, the part of the sailing boat. Les homophones. So it's actually quite interesting in that lesson. So we'll talk about words that you will write differently, but then phonetically you will pronounce them the same way. And of course, they will have different meanings. Okay, so let's start now. And the first one is un air. Okay, we'll make this little link between the two. Un air. Okay, and here you've got the translation in English. And then you've got une air. Okay, so you can see that you write it differently, but then clearly phonetically it's the same. Une air. And this is the translation in English. Une amende. Une amende. And that's what it means. 
and then une amende. So here you can see that the only difference is here you've got e and here you've got a. Okay, so amende, amende, and the meaning is fine. We're talking he here about the nice little gift you will get if you break the law. Une amende. Une encre. Une encre. And then feminine as well. Une encre. Okay, so you can see here that the only difference is A here and then E here. Okay, so une encre and une encre. It's the same. Un bar. Un bar. And then une bar. Okay, so you can hear that it's exactly the same way to that you pronounce, but then you get R, R, and then E. Okay, une bar. Okay, so in that case, it's this adjective, bon. And the meaning is good in English. Okay, bon. All right. And here we've got substantive, un bon. Un bon. Un bou. Remember, final T not pronounced. Un bou. Une bou. Okay, so here the only difference between the two is here you get T at the end and here you get E at the end. Une bou. Un but. Un but. Une but. Une but. Un cent. Okay, remember this G here It doesn't exist, so un cent. And then here we've got this sans. Quite useful because it means without, sans. And we've got a third one, sans. Written like that, and it's hundred. Okay, so un cent, cent, cent. Un champ. Un champ. Un champ. Un champ. So here it's quite tricky because uh, if you look carefully, well, of course you pronounce them the same way because that's the, the, the topic of this video, but then uh, masculine in both cases. So, un champ, un champ. Un col. Un col. Une col. Une col. The lysomophone, because actually I was thinking about doing four videos uh, concerning this topic. So remember, when we're talking about lysomophone, we're talking about all these words that we have in French that you will write differently but then pronounce the same way. And of course, the meanings uh, will be different. So that's the reason why it's quite important to take a few minutes to try to see them and try to avoid uh, any mistakes. Okay? All right, so we'll start now. And the first one is un compte. Un compte. And here you will have the translation. Un compte. So exactly the same pronunciation, but then of course the meaning is different. Un compte. Un coup. And then un coup. All right, so you can see that you get this final P here, but then you don't pronounce it. And last, un coup. Okay, remember, accent circonflex, you don't pronounce it. Final T, same thing, you don't pronounce it. Okay, so un coup, un coup, and then un coup. The same pronunciation. Une cour. And then we get the adjective cour. And after that, 
un court. And then un court. All right, so you can see that here you get the feminine, une cour, then you get the adjective cour, un cour, un cour. Un cuir. And the verb cuir. Okay, so un cuir, and then cuir. Une date. Une date. So it's quite interesting because in English uh, it's written the same way. Okay, so in that case we're talking about the fruit. So une date. Okay, and here une date. So 31 janvier, for instance. Une date. Okay. Une eau. And then the adjective eau. Okay, une eau, eau, une fin, and then une fin, okay, so phonetically the same, un fil, une file. Okay, so don't try to, uh, well, don't mix it with uh, une fille, okay, because you get the double L, but in that case you get only one, so une file, okay, un fil, une file. Lait. Un lait. Okay, so the only difference is final thing here, D, you don't pronounce it, T, you don't pronounce it, so phonetically you only have this LE. Une mer. Une mer. Un mer. Alright, so mer, mer, mer. Right, in both cases. Here you've got the feminine form and then here it's masculine. Of course it could be feminine as well because uh, mayor it can be ladies as well. Les homophones, so remember, we write them differently, we pronounce them the same way and they have different meanings. Okay, so that's the thing. Um, it is the third video, so the next one will be the last one covering this topic. Okay, so let's start now. Un maître, and so you will have the translation here. Un maître, and then un maître as well. Okay, so un maître and un maître, same pronunciation. Un moi, and then moi, me. Okay, so un moi and moi. Un mur. And the adjective, mur. Okay, so un mur and mur. Un nez. Nez. Okay, so un nez and nez. Un nom. Non. Un nom. Non. Un pain. Un pain. Right. Un pain. Un pain. Un père. Une paire. Père. Okay, so in that case we're talking about the numbers. All right, so père. So here, un père, une paire, père. Une patte. Une patte. Okay, une patte, 
une pâte, une paume, une pomme. Okay, so you can see that I pronounce them a little bit, uh, well, a little bit different, differently. But then uh, we'll be careful that in many, many cases people will pronounce them the same way. Okay, because in that case normally it should be a bit lower, pom, and then here more open, so pom. Okay. Une pause. Une pause. Okay, so une pause, une pause. Lesomophone, so it's the fourth video covering this topic. Uh, remember, lesomophone, we're talking about words that uh, are pronounced the same way but written differently, and of course the meaning is different. Okay, so we'll see 10 of them uh, in this video. So let's start with the first one. Une peau. And here you have the meaning in English. Une peau. Un peau. Okay, so une peau, un peau. Un point. Un point. All right, so you can see that here the only difference is the final letter, okay, but then they are pronounced the same way and both of them are masculine. Un point. Un point. Un port. Un port. Okay, exactly the same thing here. Only the last letter is different. You don't pronounce it, and then both of them are masculine. Un port. Un prêt. Prêt. Okay, so it's quite interesting here. So you get un prêt written like that. So in that case, it's a substantive, so word, noun, and that's the meaning. Then you get prêt like that, so final s, but then of course you don't pronounce it. And here, prêt, so the adjective. Okay. Une roue. Roue. Alright, so une roue and then roue. Salle. Une salle. Okay, so even if you get the double L here, it will be still the same pronunciation as this one. So salle, une salle. So in that case, it's here, it's an adjective. Un seau. Un seau. Okay, so un seau, and then the same way, un seau. Sur. Sur. Okay, even if you get this accent circonflex, you don't pronounce it, so you get the same pronunciation sur and sur. Une tente. Une tente. Okay, so it's exactly the same pronunciation, even if you get a here, here, and e here. Okay, and both of them are feminine. Une tente. Un toit. Toit. Okay, so in that case, we're talking about moi, toi, lui, elle, so we saw that a long time ago. Okay, and then both of them are pronounced like toi. Un toi, toi. Le préfixe il, so il. When we're talking about préfixe, normally we're talking about, uh, well, Letters, a uh, group of letters uh, that you will put in front of existing words. And by adding these letters or group of letters, you will change the meaning or the original meaning of the word. 
okay and that will be the case with this prefix il okay so let's see and so normally if we're talking about this il prefix then it will mean privé de sang okay and this is actually what it means in english so without or then well less okay so that will be the meaning of this il prefix let's see three examples so the first one here légitime okay so légitime and then if you want to express well the without concept then you will add this prefix i l at the beginning and then after that you continue with your original word légitime and now you get illégitime okay illégitime légitime illégitime second example lisible okay lisible and then same idea you just add this i l in front and then you get illisible illisible and the last one legal okay legal exactly the same concept you just add this e l in front of legal and you get illegal okay so of course you understood that we add this e l here because the original word is starting with l okay so that's the reason why you will have this e and then l all right so legal illegal le prefix im okay so when we're talking about prefix we're talking about letters that you will add at the beginning of existing words and uh, by adding these letters you will modify the, the the meaning of the word okay so let's see now and in this lesson well by adding this im at the beginning of existing words in most of the cases they will start with p okay just for info information by adding this em you will modify the meaning and it will mean privé de or sans okay that is the result that you will get by adding this em okay so let's see now a few examples the first one is pair okay so the meaning is even and then i just put some numbers to to, to make it uh, clear that we're talking about numbers so two, four, six, eight. okay so pair and then if you want to express the without so you will use this impair impair so you put em and then after that the rest impair okay pardonnable pardonnable same rule same way of working im in front impardonnable impardonnable parfait parfait exactly the same imparfait imparfait pensable pensable and then it goes all the time the same way impensable impensable poli poli impoli impoli possible possible impossible impossible précis précis Imprécis. So you can see that it's all the time the same technique. So you just add this EM in front. 
imprécis. Probable. Probable. Improbable. Improbable. Prudent. Prudent. Imprudent. Imprudent. Oublie le préfixe IN. OK, so remember, when we're talking about prefix, we just uh, were talking about uh, letters that you will put in front of existing words and by adding these letters you will mod modify the original meaning of the word okay so in that case this en prefix will mean privé de or sans okay privé de sans and this en will be used when the original word is starting with a vowel or H plus une voyelle. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. And the first one is acceptable. Okay, acceptable. You will have the translation here in English. And it's not that difficult in that case. And if you want to express this privé de or sans, okay, without or less, then you will add this EN as we saw first at the beginning of your word, then you will just add your word and you get inacceptable. Okay, acceptable, inacceptable. Achevé, inachevé. Okay, achevé, inachevé. Admissible, inadmissible, admissible, inadmissible, animé, inanimé, animé, inanimé, attendu. Inattendu. Attendu. Inattendu. Imaginable. Inimaginable. Imaginable. Inimaginable. Oubliable. Inoubliable. Oubliable. Inoubliable. Utile. Inutile. Utile. Inutile. Le préfixe IR, and the good news is that it will be the last uh, video. Uh, for this chapter of prefix, okay, so if you remember when we're talking about prefix, actually we're talking about letters, like in that case ER, that you will add at the beginning of an existing word, and by adding these letters, you will modify the meaning or the original meaning of the word, okay, and in that case, when you will put this ER, and you will see that we're talking about words that will start with okay but then you will modify the meaning and the meaning will be privé de or sans okay privé de or sans so let's check three examples and the first one is réel okay réel and then as I said you just add this er and then after that you put your Réel again, and you will get irréel, irréel, okay, réel, and then irréel, régulier. So as I said, remember they start with r all the time. Régulier, 
and then exactly the same technique IR and after that you put it back irregulier okay regulier then irregulier the last one résistible résistible and exactly the same way IR and you put it back irrésistible irrésistible so résistible irrésistible le suffixe easy i s e r okay so after having uh, doing some videos uh, regarding les préfixes now we'll try to see a little bit uh, what we call les suffixes okay so uh, les suffixes actually we're talking about these uh, letters that you can put or you can add at the end of existing words and by adding these letters you will modify it or you will change the meaning or in that case we will change adjectives into verbs okay so that's the whole idea of this video and here we'll only focus on the adjectives that will end with a l okay a l and then well as we saw we will just add at the end of these adjectives this e s e r just to make a verb okay so let's see a few examples now and the first one is banal okay so here is the meaning in english okay so if we want to make a verb out of this adjective then we only need to as i say put this e s e r at the end and then you will get banalisé banalisé okay so adjective banal verb banalisé brutal and then we will get brutalisé okay brutal and then you just add this e s e r at the end and you'll get brutalisé central centralisé okay exactly the same way central and then the verb centralisé égal égalisé égal égalisé Général, généralisé, général, généralisé, légal, légalisé, légal, légalisé. national nationalisé national nationalisé le suffixe e m e n t e okay and the idea is to well see how we can clearly come from a verb and to make from that verb a noun okay and so the idea is we'll see that if your verb is ending with a er okay so that's what we'll see in this video but of course it doesn't as usual when we we learn french it doesn't concern all the verbs ending with a er okay but actually the verbs that we'll see in this lesson uh, will work with that uh, that uh, concept so you will actually need to take away this a er ending and you will replace it with the suffix so this thing e m e n t okay to get the noun and you get to keep in mind that the noun must express the action okay because you can have many nouns or many uh, substantives as we say that will uh, express different things okay but in that case when you're going from the verb to this substantive so this noun it must express the action okay so let's see a few examples now the first one so amuser 
okay so you will have here the translation in English okay so well if we just respect the the, the rule so we take away this uh, air and then we will modify and we will put this suffix e m e n t instead and we will get this un amusement okay so amuser un amusement changer un changement changer un changement commencer un commencement commencer un commencement se comporter un comportement se comporter un comportement développer un développement développer un développement gouverner un gouvernement gouverner un gouvernement grouper un groupement grouper un groupement rassembler un rassemblement rassembler un rassemblement traiter un traitement traiter un traitement le suffixe ismant ok and the idea is to see how we could make uh, nouns or uh, substantives um, if we're starting from the verbs okay so let's see the idea is that we're talking here about the verbs that will belong to the second group of verbs so ending in er okay and the well the rule or the way to make them is that we'll take away this er so the ending of the verb and we'll replace it with the le suffix ismant so e s s e m E -N -T. okay so that's the rule and then the only thing that we should keep in mind because of course if we're talking about making uh, substantives uh, based on verbs it's possible to have different type of substantives but in that case uh, the substantive so the noun must express the action okay and that's the that's the only thing that you should keep in mind okay so let's see a few examples now the first one élargir and so you can see here the translation in English. Un élargissement. Okay, so you can see that as we saw, you just need to take away this er from the verb and then you replace it with the ismant. Okay, and then you get the un élargissement. Okay, so élargir, un élargissement. Ralentir, un ralentissement. Ralentir, un ralentissement. Rajeunir, un rajeunissement. Rajeunir, un rajeunissement. Vieillir, un vieillissement. Vieillir, un vieillissement. Le corps humain, donc le vocabulaire concernant le corps humain. Le tube digestif. Le tube digestif. L'articulation. L'articulation. La bouche. La bouche. Le bras, le bras, 
la cage thoracique, la cage thoracique, le cerveau, le cerveau, les cheveux, les cheveux, la cheville, la cheville, la clavicule, la clavicule, le cœur, le cœur, la colonne cervicale, la colonne cervicale, la colonne dorsale, la colonne dorsale. La colonne vertébrale. La colonne vertébrale. La côte. La côte. Le cou. Le cou. Le coude. Le coude. Le crâne. Le crâne. La cuisse, la cuisse, la dent, la dent, le doigt, le doigt, le dos, le dos, l'épaule, l'épaule, l'estomac. L'estomac, le foie, le foie, le front, le front, le genou, le genou, l'intestin, l'intestin, la jambe, la jambe. La joue, la joue, la lèvre, la lèvre, la mâchoire, la mâchoire, la main, la main, le membre, le membre, le menton. Le menton, le muscle, le muscle, le nerf, le nerf, le nez, le nez, la nuque, la nuque, l'œil, l'œil. L'ongle, l'ongle, l'oreille, l'oreille, l'orteil, l'orteil, l'os, l'os, la paume de la main, la paume de la main, la phalange. La phalange, le pied, le pied, la plante du pied, la plante du pied, le poignet, le poignet, le poing, le poing, le pouce, le pouce. Le pouls, le pouls, le poumon, le poumon, le rein, le rein, le sang, le sang, le talon, le talon, la tempe. 
la tempe, la tête, la tête, le thorax, le thorax, le tibia, le tibia. Oops, I made a mistake here. It should be masculine. Sorry about that. Le ventre. Le ventre. Les abrégements de mots. And we'll only focus in this video on les abrégements de mots, but well, the words that will end with O or the sound of O. Okay? So let's start now. Un adolescent, un adolescent, un adolescent, ok? And then in most of the cases when people will speak, they will use un ado, un ado. Ok, so un adolescent will become un ado. Un apéritif. Un apéritif will become un apéro. Un apéro. Ok, so, un apéritif, un apéro. Une décoration, une décoration, and it will become une déco. Une déco. Ok, so, une décoration, une déco. Une démonstration, une démonstration will become une démo. Une démo. Une démonstration, une démo. Un dictionnaire, un dictionnaire will become un dico. Ok, un dico. So one more time, un dictionnaire, un dico. Une exposition, une exposition will become une expo, une expo. Un hebdomadaire, so in that case we're talking about the, the magazine, un hebdomadaire will become un hebdo. Ok? Un hebdo. So one more time. Un hebdomadaire, un hebdo. Un intellectuel, un intellectuel will become un intello. Un intello. Ok? One more time. Un intellectuel, un intello. Un laboratoire, un laboratoire will become un labo, un labo. Personnel, personnel will become perso, perso. Ok, one more time. Personnel, perso. Un professionnel, un professionnel will become un pro. Un pro. Ok, so un professionnel, un pro. Un propriétaire, un propriétaire will become un proprio. Un proprio. Ok, so un propriétaire, un proprio. Un restaurant, un restaurant will become un resto. Okay, so you can see that here you've got another way of writing it, okay, but then, well, phonetically it's exa exactly the same, so un resto, okay, so whether with O or then with AU, but then it's resto, resto, the same way, okay, so un restaurant, un resto. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 12, Leçon C. And in this lesson, we will see les préfixes de verbes. So remember these little letters that you can put at the beginning of existing words, or in that case, it will be verbs. 
and by adding these little letters you will modify the, the original meaning of the, the word and in this lesson we'll work on le préfixe D okay and you'll see because well quite often I've been having some students that uh, asked me uh, how do you uh, translate in French or is there a way to to make this un that exists in English so like do undo okay uh, and then the answer is yes uh, actually we've got this prefix d okay so it will actually uh, be well the same uh, I mean the use will be the same as uh, in English this un or as well there is this this uh, for some some verbs so it will be exactly the same same thing okay we've got this d okay keep in mind that we will see in the next lesson so it will be unit 12 lesson d uh, we've got the option of d uh, accent aigu s and we will see that so in the next lesson but in this lesson we'll only focus on the d Okay, so let's take an example now. We've got branché, okay, and then débranché, all right? So it's actually quite easy. Just put this D in front of the verb and then branché. Branché, débranché, centralisé, décentralisé, okay? Centralisé, and then it will become décentralisé. Chargé, déchargé. Okay, so chargé and then déchargé. Coiffé, décoiffé. All right, so coiffé and then you put this D and after the verb décoiffé. Collé, décollé. Okay, so collé. And then it will become décoller. Commander will become décommander. Okay, so commander will become décommander. Composer, décomposer. All right, so composer will become décomposer. Conseiller will become déconseillé. All right, so conseillé, déconseillé. Couvrir will become découvrir. Okay, so couvrir, découvrir. Faire will become défaire. Okay, so faire, Défaire. Former. Déformer. All right, so former. Déformer. Placer. Will become. Déplacer. Placer. Déplacer. Plaire. Déplaire. Plaire will become déplaire. Ranger. Déranger. Okay, so ranger. Déranger. And that's it. So keep in mind that, of course, it doesn't apply to all the verbs because in some cases it's not possible to modify the original verbs. Okay, but then uh, well, this is quite useful because, uh, as you can see, it's not that difficult and then uh, you could use these uh, verbs quite often. Okay, if you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier and then like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash imagier.net and you can find a lot of things at the following address, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Prefix de verbe, and we'll focus this video on this prefix de uh, accent aigu s. Okay, so actually, I've been 
having many uh, questions regarding or from students regarding the, the um, translation of this un uh, prefix in English so like when you get do and undo or uh, this because it could be this as well for uh, some verbs and uh, we saw in the previous lesson that uh, the first prefix that we should use is de okay it was in the lesson so unit 12 lesson C okay um, but then this prefix will be used uh, for the verbs that will start with a consonant okay but then we've got also verbs starting with a vowel or then the um, mute H plus a vowel and then in that case we'll have to use the uh, accent aigu S okay so in this video we'll see this D uh, accent aigu S okay and it will be used for so the verb starting with a, a vowel or then H so H but then muet, mute, okay, plus a vowel. So remember that we're not talking about all the verbs starting with ash. And then we will have also the option of the es. So you can see that you don't have any accent here. And it will be used only for the verbs that will start with the letter s here, okay? So keep in mind the e accent aigu s will be used for verbs starting with whether in voyelle or h muet, okay, and then de e without the accent s will be used for the verbs starting with s, okay. So let's see now a few examples. The first one, s'abonner, s'abonner, se désabonner, s'abonner, se désabonner. Armé, armé, désarmé, désarmé. Okay, so armé will give you this désarmé. Avantagé, avantagé will give you désavantagé, désavantagé. Équilibré, équilibré will give you déséquilibré, déséquilibré, okay, déséquilibré, sorry, déséquilibré. Espérer, espérer, désespérer, désespérer, okay, espérer, désespérer. Habiller, habiller. Déshabillé, déshabillé. Okay, so you can see that here, this H here, this letter is not pronounced. So, habillé and then déshabillé. Intéressé, intéressé, désintéressé, désintéressé. Obéir, obéir. Désobéir, désobéir. Organiser, organiser, désorganiser, désorganiser. We'll start a series of videos that will uh, cover the um, subject, les préfixes et les verbes. And this, in this video, we will see actually the verb dire. You get the translation here in English, so dire, okay? And then we'll see that it's possible to add some uh, prefixes, so it's possible to add some letters before this dire, and then by adding these letters, we will modify the meaning of dire, okay? So let's see. And the first thing that we've got here is contre, and then dire, okay? Contredire. Contredire, and you can see that of course the meaning is changing. Contredire, okay? Then interdire, interdire, prédire, prédire, 
redire, redire. Les préfixes et les verbes. So, uh, this video will only focus on the verb mener. Okay, this is the meaning of mener. Okay, and we'll see that by adding few letters in front of mener, we'll, we will actually change the meaning of these verbs. So, the original meaning of these verbs. And this is right here, the original meaning. Okay, so let's see now. The first one is amener. Amener. Okay, and you can see here the translation. Then, emmener. Emmener. Okay. Same thing here. Ramener. Ramener. Surmener. Surmener. And then you've got a translation right here. Les préfixes et les verbes. And in this video, we'll see the verb lever. Okay, so this is the translation in English of lever, and then we'll see that by adding few letters in front of lever will actually change the meaning of this verb. Okay, so, and the first one would be enlever, enlever, relever, relever, soulever, soulever. Les préfixes et les verbes, and we'll see in this video the verb mettre. Okay, so that's the translation of mettre. Okay, mettre. And so we'll see that uh, when we add few letters in front of mettre, well, uh, in this case, actually, it will change the meaning, the original meaning of this verb. Okay, so the first one will be ad, admettre. Okay, so admettre. And this is the translation in English. Admettre. Then we'll have commettre. Commettre. Then émettre. Émettre. And we've got a translation here. Permettre. Permettre. Promettre, promettre. Remettre, remettre. Soumettre, soumettre. Transmettre, transmettre. And you've got a translation right here. Les préfixes et les verbes, and in this video, will concentrate on the verb paraître. So this is the meaning of paraître, and the idea is that, of course, when we're talking about les préfixes, we will add few letters in front of paraître, and by adding these, le these letters, we'll change the meaning of the verb. Okay, so let's see. The first one will be apparaître. Apparaître. And you've got here the translation in English. Disparaître. Disparaître. Reparaître. Reparaître. And you've got the translation right here. Les préfixes et les verbes, ok? So, and in this video, we'll concentrate on the verb passé. And here you have the translation in English. Ok, so the idea is that uh, we've got this verb passé, and then it will be possible to add some letters, so that's what we call prefix, in front of passé. And by adding these letters, well, we'll change the meaning, the original meaning of the verb passé. Ok, so let's see how it goes. So, the first thing, if we add this D, okay, we will get the, the verb dépasser, dépasser, and here you have the meaning in English, okay? Well, then we could add this R in front of passé, so we get this repassé, and then here is the meaning in English, repassé, okay? 
And it's also possible to add sur, okay, surpassé, surpassé, and here is the meaning in English. Les préfixes et les verbes, okay, and in this video we'll focus on the verb porter, and that's how it could be translated. Okay, so the idea is that we will add some letters before and then by add, adding these letters, uh, the meaning, the original meaning of the verb will be modified. Okay, so let's see now. The first one, so if you add this AP, AP, you will get apporter, apporter. Okay, that's actually a translation of this verb. Apporter. Okay, then we can add O, sorry, C O M. So, comporter, comporter. Comporter, okay, and that's the translation here. Or it could be se comporter, okay, se comporter. And you have here the meaning of this verb. Then it's possible to add EM, so you will get the en, emporter, okay, emporter. And here is the translation. X, uh, X, exporté, exporté. Well, this one is actually quite easy to translate, okay? Exporté. Then it's possible to use this IM in front, so un, importé, importé. Okay, again, here are the translations. Then it's possible to use this RAP, so rap, rapporté, rapporté. And also it's possible to use this REM, rem, remporté, okay, remporté, remporté. You can also add this SUP in front of porté, sup, supporté, supporté. We don't really pronounce the two or the double P here, supporté. Well, then it's possible to use this or to add this T R A N S trans transporter transporter transporter. You can also use this R A P rap rapporter rapporter. So same thing here. You don't pronounce the double P rapporter. Les préfixes et les verbes, and in that video, will actually have posé. And so you've got the translations here, okay, of posé. And so remember that, uh, well, the idea is that we will add letters in front of posé, so that's what we call prefix. And by adding these prefix, we will modify the meaning or the original meaning of the verb poser. Okay, so let's see now what we've got. So it's possible to add this com prefix con composé. Okay, composé. All right, and you've got here the translations of this verb composé. It's also possible to add the prefix d uh, accent aigu d D, and you get déposé, all right, déposé, and here you can find what it means in English, okay, déposé. It's also possible to add the prefix E-N-T-R-E, entre, entre, and you get entreposé, 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 okay, and here is the meaning. Then it's possible to add this PRO, pro, proposé, okay, proposé. Or then you can also add this R, E, re, reposé, 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 okay, and here you've got the translation. 
It's also possible to have, when we're talking about this reposer, well, this se reposer, se reposer, se reposer. les préfixes et les verbes. And in this video, we'll actually focus on the verb prendre. Here is or here are the translations possible for prendre, okay? And the idea is that, of course, we're talking about préfixes, so these letters that you can add before the verb, and by adding this le these letters, you will modify the original meaning of the verb. Okay, so let's see a few examples now. The first one, A, P, so ap, you will get apprendre, apprendre, okay, you don't pronounce the double P, apprendre, so here is what it means, okay, apprendre. Then it's possible to put this C, O, M in front of prendre, and you will get comprendre, comprendre, okay, comprendre. It's also possible to use this E N T R E entre, entreprendre, entreprendre, entreprendre. It's also possible to use this R E re, reprendre, reprendre, reprendre. Okay, get the translation here. S U R sur sur surprendre okay surprendre and here is what it means okay surprendre les préfixes et les verbes and in this lesson we'll concentrate on the verb tenir and here is how you could translate these verb in english okay so the idea is that it will be possible to add what we call prefix, so actually letters before this verb, and by adding these letters, you will modify the meaning, the original meaning of this verb. Okay, so let's see now a few examples. So the first one that we have, if you add the letters C, O, N, con, you will get contenir, contenir, contenir. Okay, and that's how it could be translated. Then it's possible to add this E, N, T, R, E, entre, and you will get entretenir, entretenir, entretenir. And here is the meaning. Okay, then it's also possible to add this M, A, I, N, main, maintenir, maintenir. Okay. And that's how you should or you could translate it. It's also possible to use this R E prefix re retenir retenir and that's what it means. And also S O U sou soutenir soutenir okay soutenir les préfixes et les verbes and the last verb that we will, so to, we will see together is venir okay so you get the translation here okay so venir and then when we talk about les préfixes well we will talk about letters that we will add in front of venir and by adding these letters we'll change the meaning or the original meaning of this verb okay so let's see how it will go. The first thing that we could add would be C-O-N, con, and then we would get convenir, convenir, okay, and here you will see for each verb the translation in English, okay, convenir. We also have the possibility to add to add D and E, de, devenir, okay, devenir, It's also possible to add this I-N-T-E-R, inter, inter, intervenir, intervenir, intervenir.
And then we can also add PR E accent aigu, pré, prévenir, prévenir, prévenir. Ok. We can add also this R E, re, revenir, revenir, revenir. And so it's possible to add this S O U sous, okay, and the verb is réflexif, réfléchi, sorry, se souvenir, se souvenir, se souvenir. It's also possible to add this S U B sub, sub, subvenir. Subvenir, subvenir. And the last one, S U R, sur, survenir, survenir, survenir.